as uh, the previous unit we dealt with the definition comparison in constructing of directing and leading we also discussed the characteristic importance of function of leading so <coughs> this is David Aspo and uh, prepared by the Galila International Seminary this is course is about structure, organizational structure, and management process. So now we are going to discuss chapter six, that is about control. That is control, one of the component, main components of the organization, and also one of the management process and the structure is controlling is an important uh, integral for part of uh, the uh, company or the business organization. Control uh, is the last in the management process. It is the last, but not the least. And it is perhaps the most important in reality. Most managers are busy laying down controls and exercises. So the most important uh, activities of a manager is about control, controlling the system, controlling the, the, the management part, controlling the different uh, activities of the, the company, and controls and exercising them according to the, the task that's supposed to do by all involved uh, stakeholders and actors. Control is a rudder of a business because it ensures that a process is going to the right direction by making continuous corrections. Without control, how can you make continuous corrections without controlling? It will be out of the track. It will go out of the track. So without control, the business will perhaps go to where it should never go and do what it should never do. We don't know whether the, the, the work or the task or the activity or the, the project according to the mission and the vision. So controlling is an uh, important part of the process. When you define, controlling can be defined a measuring and uh, correcting of performance to achieve organizational goals. According to Bridge, controlling is a systematic exercise which is called a process of checking actual performance against the standards of plans which a view to ensure adequate progress and also recording such experience is gained as contribution to possible future needs. So it is a systematic exercise and also checking the actual performance against the standard or plan with a view of to ensure adequate progress and also recording such experience as gained as contribution to possible future needs. So for future needs, you have to exercise a systematic way of checking the processes. According to Daniel, just as a, a navigator continually takes reading to ensure whether he is relative to planned action, so should business manager continually take reading to assure himself that this is enterprise in the right course. So according to Donald, controlling is a continual task for the right course. This is, in short, he wants to say. The importance of control, control is important because the following reasons. It creates the basis for the future. It provides basis for future planning action, action of plan, planning, plan of action, because it identifies and reports the efficiency of project or any action. The other important, importance of the control is guides to keep goals on track. The continuous flow of information about projects and performance is determined by control. 
And the other one is it prevents repetition of mistakes. It also enables the management to avoid repetition of past mistakes by enabling one to decide the future course of action. It's always a guarantee for the, for the course of the future. Once you control now, you will also correct in the future. Because repetition of mistakes brings the, the, the organization out of the track. Enables future planning and follow-up action. It enables planning for the future and facilitation of follow-up action. For future planning is also controlling is important. So uh, uh, controlling is very important uh, part of uh, any business organization or any development organization or any governmental organization. This is an important uh, task of the process. We are going to, uh, uh, we have seen some of the parts on uh, controlling. There are different controlling techniques that we can determine the organization is in the right track or out of the track. We can, uh, we can have a performance task uh, and control technique that could be measuring uh, the organization. These are profit and loss control. This is the simplest form and capture the revenue and cost. By revenue and also by expenses, we can also control the techniques. And the other one is control through return investment. That measures both the absolute and the relative success of company or unit by ratio earning to invest or capital. So this is one of the control techniques that also uh, uh, performs in a business organization. The other one is management audits and accounting. Accounting also uh, uh, one of the area that to exercise uh, the controlling mechanisms of the organization. So these are the main areas that uh, controls the, the business organizations as to make uh, on the right track. Uh, as we discussed on chapter six, uh, it is control about, it's about, we, we are talking about control more about it how we implement it, how it is important, how it is also uh, organized, and how the organization requires control. <coughs> Chapter 7 is about power, politics, conflict, negotiation, and distress. So you know that any company or any organization, development organization, or government organization, or business organization is affected by externally and internally, by power, politics, conflict, negotiations, and distresses. So all these have affected the organization uh, uh, processes. So we have to see also that uh, this uh, uh, unit, unit seven is talking about power, this organization about, is talking about internal and external, affected by internally and externally. So power is very important because it is so power that we influence people. The one who influences people, because always an organization is interacting with people. Business uh, organization interacting with people. Not only people, as, as a group of people also, it's interacting with community, interacting with society, interacting with many scholars, many, uh, high level people. Low, low level people, medium level people. So power is very important in organization, uh, in organizational structure and also management process. So that's why we are uh, uh, dealing with also our uh, politics, conflict, negotiation, and distress. All our, uh, they are manifested in, in, in the process of organization. 
So there are two types of uh, uh, power. One is formal, and the other one is informal. As you know, formal power is like organization. Formal power comes uh, virtue of position. <coughs> there are four components which facilitate this. Once in power, a manager can coerce a person to a trade of warning, cutting of pay, holding, promotions. So every direct, direct, directives of punishment and also uh, rewarding is uh, uh, called coercive power. The other one is the reward power. The manager can reward a person and therefore he gain power over the subordinates. So because of the reward power, Someone, the manager, can get and gains the power over the person. Because support is willing to accept the orders of the manager to gain the reward. <coughs> so the other one is legitimate power. This comes because of the position and believes that some things are supposed to be done with good by the person is that position. The right to government. That is legitimate power. On, uh, on a division uh, or a department, somebody assigned for that particular department or a particular division or classes or organization, he has a legitimate power to command the one who works the same. So the other one is information power. This is delivered from access and the control over information. When people need information, others become dependent on them. So that is also formal power, that is inf information power. So this is the power that the organizations also exercise. The other one is personal power. This is the personal power is related to expert power. An expert who has experience, knowledge, or judgment other persons lack. That it needs. So uh, this is an expert power. The person who has different exercise, uh, experiences, knowledge, and other uh, required skills. Those have uh, expert power. Rational persuasion. Rational persuasion is the ability to control another's behavior by using logical arguments. Biological arguments, you will have a convincing power to the others. So you convince people by your way of interacting, by way of speech, by your way of your skin experience, by way of uh, uh, talking uh, appropriate uh, suitable actions for, for the area. So this is, we call it, uh, I mean, the the uh, scholar said personal power. So there are many uh, powers uh, you can read from the, 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 the module. Charismatic power, those who are active in an in, in, in area of motivating and mobilizing peoples. These peoples have uh, a charismatic power because this uh, an exceptional personality they have. So they mobilize and they, 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 have, they have ability to gather people and you know they have convincing power. So this this power is also very important in organizations. The other one is politics. What do you think students? What what's what's politics? Why it's affecting the organization process and the management process? Why the management uh, the behaviors are affected by the politics? What do you mean by the politics here? Organizational politics refers to use and manipulation of situations. Power and people to secure their position and gain from the situation. So there are, there are a lot of interaction going on in an organization, in a business organization, that to happen to, to, to happen to secure a certain places and in a certain positions to have for the, for the sake of their own uh, uh, purpose. So there is organizational politics. Maybe some of you are uh, a church members and church leaders. There is also a church politics. Yeah, yeah, you know that. Yeah, 
that is church politics. Because people are, you know, motivating and also pushing and having a pressure to someone and somebody or to the church to get a certain part of, uh, you know, acknowledgement and a certain part of uh, position in, in, the, in that particular uh, church or church organization or other business organization. So there is organization of politics. The other is may be done by letting others down and by increasing their own power, image, and status within the organization. These people are using their basic their power, their uh, background, uh, a bit experience, maybe they have also their image. So they are trying to show something different from the other ordinary we know members of the, 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 the institution or members of the, the organization. So anyway, organizations also reverse politics. Politics at workplace is a game that can be played equally with by a single player or teams together. So by characteristics, there are teams involved, also uh, individuals are involved in these politics. So <coughs> politics at workplace is often hard to resist and be aware of it. It and makes you Compete. Also, it is practically impossible to make workplace free from politics, the organization, and the employees can follow certain ethics for themselves to make their workplace healthier. So, the, the writer of this uh, uh, text advises that take away and have a distance from organizational politics because it harms the organization and it harms the people. It harms the process of the, the management process and also the organizational behavior of the, the organization. So <coughs> he, he advises living at peace with others. So we have to live in peace with others. In order to secure the uh, organization management process and also the organization behavior. And be helpful. Always the big problems that in organization. People are not willing to help the others. Have you seen this before in your organization? Have you tested in the church? Uh, Mr. Phil, have you tested this? Many people are not in a position to help the others. So that is a part of the politics. They are not ready to help the others. They, are, they want their own favor. They are looking for their uh, advantages. They are looking for their own, you know, somebody's, uh, you know, talking about themselves. So this is, this is a organization. And also, there is a lot of gossip is going on. So the writer says that, you know, take away and stay away from the gossip. Because gossip spoils the organization image, <coughs> the people's image, and also distracts the relationship with the employees. So you can read more about it, this one. Uh, now uh, I'm trying to also see that in the organization, in the, uh, in the business organization also, there are many conflicts, conflicts of interests, conflicts of the, the organization interests, conflicts of people's <coughs> position, uh, and also other, uh, other interests also creates conflict. So the organization, uh, any organization have also Conflict, but according to Goodman defines conflict, any situation in which incompatible goals, attitudes, emotions, or behaviors lead to disagreement or opposition between two or more parties. So there are many parties or many peoples, more than two peoples involved in situation is incompatible goals, 
attitudes, emotions, behaviors, disagreements of the position. <coughs> there are several other definitions, but we can put them together, conclude that. Conflict arises. How can uh, conflict arise in an organization? When individuals or groups perceive they have mutually excluding goals or values. Second, behavior is designated to defeat, reduce, or suppress a new point. The third one, groups are opposing each other, is mutually opposing actions and counteractions. Four, each group attempts to create a relatively favorable position in the So, conflict can be arises in a management process and organizational behavior. So you can read also the rest of the types of conflicts, conflict, and also there is outcomes of conflict, positive consequences, and the negative consequences you can get from the now uh, I'm trying to proceed on uh, chapter seven. So I'm going to proceed to uh, unit eight, which is about group behavior or leadership. I'm sure uh, you are going to understand how we go about it in the last chapter, sorry. So now we proceed to chapter 8. It is the other component that we have to discuss is also good behavior of leadership. By the way, what is leadership? Uh, maybe one of the uh, students from here and define it this way, maybe let me hear. But here, uh, as you see that in this unit we will deal with the overview of leadership, role of leadership, and business, theories of leadership, contingency theories of leadership, and new leadership theories. Several others may argue that leadership is a thought, learned or trained. Some are born leaders, inborn leaders, some are trained leaders. This is for the several decades have <coughs> been discussed, argued uh, over the, uh, how leaders have emerged. So I don't know what is your opinion, uh, but uh, <coughs> when we see that the overview of the leadership can leadership be a thought? One question would come into our mind when we want to learn about leadership is whether it can be taught. The Greek, the Greek general and historian, therefore, argues that leadership can be developed, not taught. Aristotle also, on the other hand, he said that, <coughs> asserted that men are distinct the way they are born. He believes there are born leaders. And William Shakespeare, he said that some are born great, some, some achieve greatness, and some are greatness thrust upon them. You can see that there are already three views, positive, negative, and negative. So what does leadership Learning involved. Leadership development involves the following, which are not different from the other skills. These are the main things that we have to consider in the leadership. <coughs> one is knowing what. The second one is knowing how to. The third one is wanting to apply it. And the fourth is applying it actually. Applying it actually. Where the leadership is always applying something. There is an action followed by, by having your, your exercise of leadership. Otherwise, if you are not actually applying it, how can you know and measure the leadership quality? And also, one thing to apply it. You have to have a desire, an interest that to apply something. And the other one is knowing how to and you have to design how to achieve it, how to gain it, how to direct it, 
and how to control it, and how to influence it at the end. So you have to, you must think about it when you have, uh, 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 when you learn about leadership. <coughs> the only one what is an important thing. Without knowing what, you can't eat. So, because of that, the definition of the leadership, according to Warren Bannister, the definition of leadership is focused much more on the individual capabilities of leader. It's, he says like this, leadership is a function of knowing yourself first. Having a vision that will communicate, building trust among colleagues, and taking effective action to realize your own leadership potential. So he's talking about that by having your own, knowing, your, your, uh, knowing yourself. You start by knowing yourself, then taking effective action to realize your own leadership potential for the others. Because leadership is about influence, influence the people. And, uh, and also having knowing a direction. This is the Bernard Marx states that leadership has been conceived as a focus of group process, as a matter of personality, as a matter of issue for players, as the exercise of influence, as a particular behavior, as a form of persuasion, as a power relation, as an instrument to achieve goals, an effective interaction, as a different, differentiated role initiation of the structure as a many combination of this definition. So he defined this in every directions. So leadership defines as this. But uh, at the end, to make it for the universal, a simple definition of leadership is leadership is the art of motivating a group of people to act towards achieving common goals. So when you talk about leadership, you have common goals. And you are acting, uh, you are motivating people. So influencing people. So this goes together always. Leadership is about people and about common goals. Effective leadership is based upon ideas that won't happen unless these ideas can be communicated to others in a way that engages them. Effective leadership always requires communication. Without communication, you can't lead people. So, leadership in short, many, many of you, you are kind of, you came from church, any companies, and organization. So, you know about more about leadership. I don't want to, to take time, a lot of time on this thing, but uh, this is leadership. It's not new business, you know that. So when you talk about contemporary business, about the role of leadership, uh, leadership in contemporary business, it is about change, about change. But uh, we are also talking about uh, when, we, when we talk about contemporary businesses and uh, in relation to leadership, we are talking about also speed because the rapid movements of the, 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 the current situation requires contemporary leadership mechanisms. So things are moving, not only speed, not only uh, change. Also, we are talking about competitiveness in collaboration. So, this is, uh, uh, we talk about leadership. Uh, I'm sure the theories of leadership, leadership styles, maybe uh, you are going to uh, read from the module. So, I'm going to proceed to Chapter 9, and uh, I'm trying to wind up all my presentation. And uh, so I'm going to uh, Unit 9. This is uh, about organization.
of culture and change. Regardless of change. As we did, the definition, the, the definition of leadership on the previous uh, unit. We have, we have already discussed about the leadership, how it is affected and how it is determined in fundamental issue of leadership in an organization. We already have seen that. But at the end, but not the least, uh, we are going to discuss organizational culture and change. This uh, organizational culture and change, as you know that fundamental culture is fundamental change and the eight steps of John Potter leading change is uh, more pronounced here in the chapter one. Culture and change are two important factors. Business managers should be proficient in culture and change. As they are a crucial factor for survival and success, organizations with strong fundamental cultures have a competitive advantage. As they are unique and difficult to indicate. Because in order to prolong the life of the organization, the organizational culture and the organizational change are the fundamentals of competitive advantage for a business organization. So we have to focus that to, to, to live long a uh, uh, business organization. We have to focus on our organizational culture and also we have to cope with the change. What is happening every day, every situation, every time and come up with unique and different types of which cannot be imitated. A, com a competitiveness advantage should not be imitated by others. So organizational culture is very important that we have to know that the definition is the concept of culture. Organizational culture is the collective behavior of people in an, an organization formed by values, beliefs, <coughs> vision, norms, working language systems and symbols and manifest in the term action and behavior. So an organization ha will have people, people have their own values, beliefs, norms, working language in an organization. So the organization uses us its own organizational culture that uh, uh, entertain with pupils working in the organization. So organizational culture as suggested by uh, Rabasi is a set of shared mental assumptions that guide interpretation <coughs> and action within an organization. They do have the same mental assumptions and interpretations Action within an organization. Those who have the part of the organization. It defines the appropriate behavior for various situations. At the same time, also a company may have its own unique culture. In larger organizations, there can be different cultures that coexist <coughs> in times of fifteen months. Uh, one of the organizations, I used to work in a non governmental organization called. SOS. That organization is established for orphanage and to, to uh, uh, work with the, the orphanage, <coughs> organizations must have its own culture. That culture is how we uh, targeting the benefits of uh, the organization, how we go to the community and how we interact and how we choose the, 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 the children and set a program for them, how we call them to, to, to come. All this has its own organizational culture. The other, uh, any of that I work with integrated urban development called SOS. That SOS NGO also has its own culture. Because it is integrated rural development, this one is orphanage. They have different cultures. 
That one is uh, uh, development oriented. This one is uh, uh, orphanage oriented. So the organizational cultures <coughs> differs from organization to organization. So uh, <coughs> I'm going to wind up by saying this one. Uh, as to me, uh, we are going to finalize all these courses. So, thank you very much for everything what you have helped. And more, uh, we want to involve the leader of the Human Health uh, from the uh, LILA International Seminary uh, College. Governments and also the modules are available. And <coughs> thank you very much that we are hearing me uh, and having such a wonderful opportunity. Thank you.